Hello, people of the Worldwide Pie Case. I'm Mr. Spork, and these are Mr. Spork's hands. I like cakes. I'm down with cookies. I love a good cobbler, but sometimes you just got to have pie. And that's what I'm going to do for you today, is I'm going to make a pie, one of the simplest pies to make. People in England would probably call this an egg custard pie, and some people describe it as pecan pie without the pecans. But it's a, it's a pie from the deep south of America called chess pie. And one of the fun things about it is that nobody really has a clue why it's called chess pie. It's not related to the game. It doesn't look like a chess board. Uh, there's a few wacky theories about uh, the southern accent just saying it's chess pie, but basically nobody knows why it's called chess pie. But it's still really, really tasty. To make pie, you got to make pie dough, and that's what I'm going to start with. I've got 370 grams of all-purpose flour. I've tried uh, different mixes of flours and such, but you know what? All-purpose is going to work very, very well. 370 grams. I'm saying it in grams, and I'm not going to tell you in cups because you should be weighing your flour. If you're working on the imperial system, flick that little switch on the back of your scale to go from ounces to grams, but 370 grams there. I've also got straight from the freezer, as you can tell, a mix. I use butter and shortening. Shortening gives me flaky pastry. Butter gives me flavor. I've got 170 grams of butter and 110 grams of shortening. This is all vegetable shortening. Uh, and as you can see, I've broken it up into pieces, and I literally just got this out of the freezer, so it is ice cold. I start my pie crusts in the food processor because it's a lot easier to cut in the fat that way. But the bottom line is you can do this by hand if you want. And I also don't finish mine really all the way. That's a little bit shy of a teaspoon of salt in there. Um, because I find that if you use the food processor the whole way, it gets a little bit tough. Um, if you're going somewhere sweet with your pies, you can put in maybe a tablespoon of sugar. Um, if you're going somewhere savory, you can leave it out. If you're going somewhere savory, you can put some in. You know, it's not a lot of sugar, so no big deal there. I just kind of like it. And obviously, you can see here, I've got ice cold water. I'm only going to be need about six tablespoons of this, uh, so make sure you don't grab an ice cube in the process. But six tablespoons done very, very slowly at the start. So here we go. Let's cut this uh, butter and f uh, shortening into the flour real fast. This is why the food processor is so handy. I think we are there. It's okay to have a few bigger chunks and you kind of want those bigger chunks because bigger chunks means flakier pastry. So that's about perfect. Now again I'm going to start with let's say one two tablespoons, uh, and again, don't go all the way in your processor with this, but let's do just to get it to start to come together, and that's enough in the processor. Now let's clear the decks just a little bit here. Okay, and then out onto my board, I'm gonna pull out my blade here, and right into a big pile, yep. Gonna make a mess, but that's part of baking, isn't it? Got my pastry scraper at the ready. I make a little bit of a well here in the center, and then I'm going to probably start with another two tablespoons of water. I'm going to bring it together. What you don't want is an overly wet dough, but it does have to be wet enough to be pliable to work out into the crust with your rolling pin. A little bit more here. So that's six tablespoons total so far. I can feel that it's just about right. So I'm just going to continue working this until I get it into a cohesive dough. Okay, that feels just about perfect. This is, of course, for two pie crust, nine inch pie crust. Don't bother making one. If you're going to make pie, you're going to want to. Whether you're making one pie with two crusts or two pies with one crust, go ahead and make both, even if you just need one right now, because they freeze perfectly well. Just going to work these into discs. Now, we do need to let them rest before we proceed to rolling them out, but uh, wrap these up in plastic, pop them into your fridge, and let them rest for at least 30 minutes. Making this filling is even easier than making the crust. It's not rocket science. You could absolutely do this manually with a big fat balloon whisk, but I'm lazy and it's hot, so I've got the upright setup with the whisk attachment. I'm going to need 300 grams of sugar 
do make sure that your eggs are at room temperature because they will give you better volume than straight from the fridge. If you're trying to separate them, it's easier to separate them when they're cold, but always let your eggs, especially if you do an egg whites, come up to temperature so that they give you better volume. So there's 300 grams of sugar. I've just got the eggs and sugar together at this point. Let's give them a whisk until they turn light in color. Oh, I forgot something. Towards the end of that whipping time, which was about three minutes in total, I drizzled in 50 grams of melted and slightly cooled unsalted butter. Adds a little bit of flavor. I think the summer heat is getting to my brain and I just somehow managed to leave it out of the edit. Don't leave it out of your pie. So as you can see, we've got a nice light color on these eggs now. Beautifully whipped and light and creamy. We're good to go there. Just a couple more quick additions. We've got to get a little tiny bit of sea salt into the mix. I'm going to use shy of a teaspoon, probably three quarters of a teaspoon there. I'm going to put in a little bit of cornstarch. This will help things set up well. I'm going to do probably a teaspoon. Let's call it two teaspoons worth of the cornstarch. I've uh, got to get some lemon juice. This is two tablespoons of lemon juice in there. Nice tartness out of that. Uh, and then here is what makes this uniquely southern. This is cornmeal, the relatively coarse cornmeal. What happens is that the cornmeal will float to the top in the oven. It will crisp up and make you a lovely little top crust. It's kind of the, the fun chemistry of pies from the deep south. I've always loved that it makes that kind of on its own. So just going to whisk those last little bits in by hand. And that is the filling done. I'll be back with the pie crust. Okay, my pie dough discs have had about 30 minutes of chill in the fridge. I'm going to use one of them for a quiche later. I'll make that video separately. So one of them sets aside. We're going to use this one. If you've chilled your dough, say, more than about two hours, you're going to want to let it warm up just a little bit. And as I mentioned earlier, these freeze really well. And of course, if you've uh, come from frozen, you're definitely going to need it to warm up to closer to room temperature. Not completely room temperature, still slightly chilled. But we're ready to go with the dough. This also gives me an excuse to uh, show you guys my fancy fancy woodworkers rolling pin. I think it's really cool. If you're using one of these French pins, something to look for in the store. Notice that it's flat, completely flat and round from uh, the uh, middle two-thirds, maybe even the middle three-quarters of it. A lot of times really cheap rolling pins, they start the taper practically in the middle. It leaves you no real flat spot in the middle to work with. So you want the flat spot for the majority of the pin and then the taper at the end, which is really what lets you turn it, uh, should start uh, much farther out. So that's what you shop for with a rolling pin. Otherwise, it's just standard rolling um, technique for a pie crust. Okay, the oven's had a good 20 minutes to preheat to 325. This is the pie shell filled. It looks a little low, but you will get some souffle effect from those eggs, so don't worry about that. Into the oven for anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes because it is a low temperature. Uh, do keep an eye on it, but it will not be completely set when you pull it from the oven. You're going to need to let it cool all the way for that to happen. I'll show you the results in just a few minutes. Okay, that pie came out of the oven. I had to let it cool all the way. Remember when you're cooking it, uh, if you jiggle the pan and you see big waves in the center, it's not quite done yet. But if you jiggle it and you just see little tiny waves, then that's the time to pull it out from the oven. The crust will have formed nice and crispy, but you do want that center to be almost set, not quite completely set. And then you have to let it cool all the way to cold. That means a couple hours on the countertop. You might even, in summer, need to go into the fridge with it. And that's what I did. I cooled it down and well, then the next morning I thought, well, I'm just going to have a little piece of pie with my coffee and, uh, you know, YouTube won't care that much. And then I was going to go out to the farm and I thought, well, you know, it'd be nice to have a piece of pie out at the farm. And I did have a, a, a piece with uh, my morning tea out there. And then the neighbor came over and she brought a big pot of coffee. And I thought, well, I can't take her coffee without a little bit of pie. Okay, okay YouTube, I'm sorry, but it, this is all that's left of the pie. I'm sorry. It was very good, and as you can see, the crust forms, and that egg custard layer in the center is just about perfect, but that's kind of proof that it was good pie. 
Okay. I'm sorry. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate you liking and thumbs up and in face tweety insta spacing and all that other stuff. If you want to get this specific recipe, please go up to my website and just click on that link there. You will get this recipe and a whole lot more. And if you haven't, please do subscribe to the channel because that's what lets me keep doing this for you. I do hope you try to make one of these chess pies and I do hope yours lasts longer. Until next time, I'm Mr. Spork. These are Mr. Spork's hands now. Go make a pie. Cheers.